this earth and I have turned afterwards to the heaven and fashioned it into seven firmaments and this is the way you have to believe in me because I'm your creator and I'm the omniscient creator yes what about you Muhammad I agree with the Rahman yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, the fact that this ayah specifies that Allah Ta'ala he created so many species yes. on this earth and everything on this earth and the sky and I'm just one of them we are just mankind is just one of them and he he created all of this for us okay she tells us that there is a big purpose of us yes. being here mm-hmm. Allah Ta'ala creating us and then the, obviously the ayah also says about Allah having all the knowledge because he is the creator so, so, so basically what you get out of it is more about the, the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this area. Do you think, do you, do you, do you get any scientific uh, uh, aspects of, of the ayah? Yes, uh, I see that he has, he has fashioned the earth, okay, specially. And, yes. uh, and I see that that is slightly, uh, in, the, in the whole universe you see that the earth is different from everything and our life is different from everything. Yes. And we, uh, any, at a, an, a balance, uh, mm-hmm. you know, at a very uh, specific balance. Yes. And uh, mm-hmm. that I see that uh, and he has taken, he has mentioned that he has taken pain and he has done this, especially. Yes. Abdul Rahman, uh, the, the unseen uh, or the unseen uh, parts of, of the science and the, and the earth and the sky, how, do, how when, you, when you listen to the ayah, what, what do you really imagine? Well, the ayah tells me basically about the sequence of creation. Allah has started with creating the earth and then he turned to the sky for something I don't know, maybe Dr. Zaghul will... Uh, this is a very important me. point that we, uh, we will have to return to Professor uh, yeah. Zaghul at the beginning, uh, the sequence. Yes. This is a very important uh, point. You see, this verse actually was uh, misinterpreted by uh, some of the commentators. Uh, some would say, does this mean that the earth was created before the firmament for the sky? Yes. Actually, the creation took place in one go. Because we know with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, His word be and it will be. You yes. see? So even scientifically, we can see today that the process of creation of the heavens and earth happened co- uh, simultaneously at exactly the same time. Because the, none of these uh, two entities could be separated from the other. Yes, and time and time is not an element into uh, the creation. No, uh, uh, the time, uh, of course, we as human beings were controlled by time. Yes. But Allah is above time and above, above space. Yes. And yani neither time nor space can delimit uh, the identity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So he can order things be and it will be. And uh, uh, the beauty in the verse, it emphasizes the fact of creation. As Abraham said, it, it emphasizes the fact of creation. Because at the beginning of this century, um, or even earlier since the days of Renaissance, um, science developed in the West by a challenge between the church and the scientists. And uh, scientists per- were persecuted quite a lot. And finally science emerged as the giant in the West. And uh, science started by a complete divorce with religion, complete divorce with the church and with religion at large. And I think so, it's an ongoing uh, uh, fight. But, until, uh, now, until now you find, you find aspects of science that a lot of scholars, were, religious scholars would think it's, it's against religion. No, but you see, it's the tailoring of the scientific notions yes. by atheists or agnostics. They gave it the flavor of uh, not believing, yes. you see. But uh, really scientific achievements uh, at a climax of today are supporting every single scientific notion in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, at the very beginning, you could uh, see neg- negation, complete negation of creation. They say the, this universe is eternal. And they produce what they call the steady state theory. Yes. That the universe is eternal. It had no beginning, will never have an end. And uh, nowadays, scientists try to assess uh, at what time the universe was created and they are giving calculations and they believe that the universe was created around 13.5 billion years ago
Yes. And when the, the, the earth was created, when the moon was created, and, and we believe that this took place in one go. So uh, if you read the, uh, a classic book in geology or in astronomy, they used to have the slogan, there is no vestige of a beginning nor sign for an end. Now they are trying to calculate the beginning and also trying to calculate when the end will, 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 will be. So when the Quran speaks about creation, you see, these uh, latest scientific discoveries substantiate the fact that this universe is not eternal. It had a beginning. And everything with a beginning must have an end. So th this testifies to the fact that the universe and everything that's in it was physically created. Yes. Secondly, the Quran differentiates between the, the early creation of the heavens and, and the earth and the later differentiation of the earth, the one earth into seven earths and the differentiation of the one firmament into seven firmaments. Yes. And that's why the, this verse, It is he, Allah, the Lord of that universe, who has created for you everything on that earth, you see. ثم استوى إلى السماء فسوهن سبع سماوات After the creation, then he started the differentiation. He made yes. the earth into seven earths and made the sky into seven skies. And it, the uh, verse ends by saying that وهو على كل وهو على كل شيء وهو بكل شيء عليم. And Allah is knowledgeable of everything. يعني this is His work, His creation. He knows everything. You see, and that's why. Uh, the beauty here is the emphasis on the fact that everything was created, that everything must have a creator. This creator has to be above his creation. Neither matter nor energy can shape his identity. Neither space nor time can delimit that identity. And this is what we can get out from this beautiful uh, cosmic verse in the Quran. Okay, uh, Professor Zaghloul, we'll, uh, we'll take a very short break and return back to uh, explain further into this uh, ayah. So uh, stay tuned. trying to get together but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but later on they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science with Professor Zalul Nagar. Uh, doctor, at the beginning, you were speaking about uh, some of the misled uh, scientists. And uh, I was thinking, uh, is, is the Holy Quran providing any sort of boundaries of thinking uh, for scientists? Or is it providing more than that? Uh, you see, uh, actually, if you read the uh, Holy Quran, uh, you could see many uh, controls and regulations about the activities of thinking, of analyzing, of looking and meditating. Uh, you see, uh, even uh, the fair Westerners who speak about the history of science uh, admit clearly that the scientific method 